Hey, I have a good video for you today. I'm going to be painting a winter landscape scene with lots of snow and featuring an old barn. I love those old barns and they're fun to paint and this video should be something that's readily accessible for a beginner to paint. I'll be using the three stages and four states of watercolor that I've demonstrated in previous videos. This should be a good video for you to watch because I'm going to walk you through and show you where and how I use those states and stages in the development of this piece. So looking at the photograph of our scene, it's an overall high key image, not a lot of oversaturated colors, a lot of neutral grays and browns and cool, cool uh, neutral grays. So I start out with mixing up a nice thin layer of cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, maybe just a bit of phthalo blue. And like I said, it's going to be very thin. Uh, the sky is kind of a steel gray, so I'm going to mix in a little brown. And just kind of taking a little time getting, getting started right now. Dropping it in, it's darker over in that upper right hand corner, and then I'll pull the uh, the mixture, the, the thinner, and this is, I wouldn't even qualify this as a tea state. It's, it's even a bit lighter than that, but kind of a steel, cold gray, blue sky. And I'll get a little more color here. And I'll drop that into the foreground, just to give the, the snow just a bit of a cool tint. A little bit of a hue and that's pretty much it this is my first state wet on wet dropping in getting all the colors kind of blocked into the, the various places dropping some of that cool into the shadow side of the barn and I should be mixing up yep dropping in a little bit of a of a brown probably a burnt looks like burnt sienna onto the main face this state is just really just knocking back the white paper. I don't need all that white paper. And I am working on a, a student grade Strathmore paper here. I'm working a little smaller too, so I don't have to spend quite as much time trying to get a finished piece that I'm videotaping. So the piece is actually dried. Now I'm working in, this is kind of uh, my stage two. And it's a fairly thin layer as well, but I'm starting to intensify saturation and block in different shapes and things like that. So the the color isn't as fluid, it's not flowing everywhere. I'm popping the, the color speci into specific shapes and areas and I'll drop it in, I'll feather it out. I'm wanting to loosen up that tree line, try to get an irregular top to that tree line and, and vary the color. So each time I come back to the palette, I introduce another dab of, of a different color, a warmer color, a cooler color, just to uh, create some color variety and variation in the in the uh, next state. All right, so now dropping it in onto the right of the barn. It's a little warmer on this side. Need a little more of that warmth over on this side. You know, trying to get some color complexities into that shape. And even though this is the second stage, I'm starting to add that saturation and defining shapes a little better. I'm working a wet on dry initially and then coming in and dropping in other colors into that wet shape. And as I, I talked about in a previous video, you know, whenever it's wet, the color really will move and blend and, and interact with each other in that wet space. It doesn't cross the barrier into the dry paint and into the dry paper. Just trying to get some color modulation going there. And this will all serve as, as just simply a, a background for any of the work that's going to happen in stage three. I'm working a little smaller this time and I wanted to, I didn't want a real long, I didn't want an extremely long video. 
So I'm, I'm uh, sacrificing scale for time. Now I'm blocking in, getting a little denser color profile onto the barn itself. Got a little more cooler side on the shadow side, that right side of the barn. Got Mr. Bead there at the bottom, that active, that active uh, wet puddle of bead. Looks like as I'm doing this, I am probably, looks like I'm overworking it a little bit. I'm actually coming in now, softening up the top with just water, just to get a little fuzzier edge on that. It's still wet, so I can come in and re and activate that edge and let that color spread into the sky. And now I'm just kind of rotating the piece around, letting gravity mix those colors a little bit. And now I'm doing a little dry into wet, and I'm just lifting some of the pigment out of that wet space just to try to get some of the the hill line definition of the ridges on the hills behind the barn. So that's just a picking technique. I'm using a flat brush right now. I'm trying to get an edge. It's going to be a soft edge. Doing the same thing on the barn, just lifting out. Actually, I'm sopping up the bead a little bit. I don't need that much of a amount of water down there. And now I'm coming in with just water on my brush, flat brush, small flat brush, and lifting out some, some uh, colors along the boards, just again to create a little more of a complex color profile on the face of that barn. Yeah, I'm still picking here. And it has now dried. We're now starting stage three. So I'm going to mix up some saturated colors, thicker colors, more in the coffee state. And I'm dropping in a little more definition now into the tree line. It's a little more saturation, definition of specific trees. Trying to get those irregular shapes, those organic shapes. I'm using a fan brush now just to get that, that broken, fuzzy, wispy edge to the tops of the trees. And even down here on the, uh, the border between the middle ground and the foreground. Checking it for dryness on the barn. A couple more, a little more detailed type strokes on that dry paper and it working into that wet area that I just added in. But I was checking the barn and it's just about time to start working in the structure and detail. All right, so I'm now painting some of the structure onto the barn. The edges, the darkest edges on the on the edges. Actually, at this point on on architecture like this, you're you're sent you you essentially are coming in to paint shadows. And I'm just checking with the palm of my hand how wet or dry the barn is. It felt good. So now I'm going to come in and really, I'm drawing. I'm drawing with a fine brush, thin lines, and, and uh, going to add all the definition. And this is where 
all the color and uh, saturations can come into play. So I'm just going to bounce around, paint in my detail, define shapes, got the edges, I have those openings, the doors, both on the side, the windows. All right, so now I'm softening those painted edges. Just, uh, I want a crisp edge on the left and I wanted to soften those edges on the right. So I'm doing that with just some damp, a damp brush. So that is, again, that subtractive process. Actually, it's kind of a dry on dry process. So the, the brush is still damp and it was damp enough to reactivate that edge, soften it. Now I'm glazing. I'm adding a various light mixtures of color onto the dry barn. The colors underneath will shine through the, the uh, thinner mixtures that I'm adding on top of it to create a more uh, to create a more color complex profile on there. So I'm adding some blues into the surface, some browns. I'm just trying to get an undulating color of warm and cool colors on that weathered that weathered wood. So I'll just kind of bounce around with this state and adding in some glazes of, again, more of the blues and some darker saturated colors and just bringing up the texture. All these various glazes and touches and just pops of color adds to that, that textural profile as well. Finding that shadow side a little better with a little darker addition of a glaze. Now I'm doing a little dry brush. I had exhausted a lot of the pigment in my brush on that side and had just a little bit left. So I did a little dry brush on the side, create some texture. Now I'm adding contrast in and defining shapes again. And I had to fix that little spot where I got a little crazy and touching in details. I'm gonna drop in the, the spots for the, the window and the window panes. Holding down my paper. You can see it has a nice curl because of the uh, dampness has, has dried. So it started out curling the opposite way, now it's curling up. Got my hand out of the way so we can see what we're doing. Again, this is a thicker mixture. This is probably in the cream state. Very thick, very dark, highly saturated. And this is detail. This is structural detail. And I'm now bouncing around and adding into the piece. The previous glazes have dried. And at this stage, you can bounce around uh, there's certain parts of your piece that'll be wet and you don't want to mess with it, let it dry. But you can go over and jump over to another spot. You don't, you don't get focused and isolated into working in one spot. So you do want to kind of work the entire piece up as a, as a complete unit rather than isolated little sections that you want to get just perfect. Painting those shadow lines. That's, that's kind of fun with the old barns and architecture is a lot of times you are just simply painting the shadows to add the, uh, the form, the structure to the, to the painting. It's really pretty fussy little details that you're just, and that's a misnomer too. It's really not detail. You're just, you're creating little spots, little pops of color, shapes and lines and, and textures, all placed in the right location. And the viewer's eye reads it as detail. I, I've had a lot of people in the past say, oh, Rusty, you're, 
your watercolors are so detailed and they're really not it's it's the illusion of of detail it's just i managed to put a a splotch of paint at just the right location in the right spot to read properly and to convince the viewer that that's what they're seeing is detail because I, I definitely consider myself a recovering photorealist that uh, I spent years painting in a very highly realistic manner and I, I grew tired of it it was becoming boring it took too long and as I've gotten older I just simply don't have the patience for it and that's one of the key features about watercolor that I love is is that it's it's immediate it's fast I can complete just about any size watercolor within a two to three hour time span. There's no more eight to 12 hours, 24 hours, 86 hours of uh, painting on a piece that uh, still comes out and looks amazing and, and makes you feel really good about what you've accomplished in that time frame. So I guess what I'm saying is as you get older, you want to compress your time. You don't, you don't want to spend all that time you want to get in there, get something that looks great and doesn't take a lot of time. Plus, you get to produce more. So I'm really just kind of bouncing around now. Layering in color complexities, detail, glazes, structure. I'm trying to paint in the edges of the boards, the illusion of boards. Yep, just bouncing around. Not much more to say about it. You can kind of see I keep glazing. Those glazes, they really produce a, a very subtle, nice interaction with the previous colors underneath. I'm working with a fine line brush right now. It's great for drawing and painting edges and lines in a piece. You get a lot of really fine detail. And that's what I'm using it for right now, is to drop in edges of boards, creating, creating that, that texture profile. So it's pretty much the same work. I'm just gonna keep working on the barn. I'll get it to a point here where I'm gonna start working on the, the background, the tree line. Add all the detail. Oh, looky there, I'm doing little splatters, getting some more textures into the surface, softening them up. All right. So really, I'm just going to continue bouncing around on this stage of the watercolor. Painting lines textures, details, just bringing up the overall, well, the overall effect that I'm looking for. We'll just keep bouncing around, working with a very small brush, thin brush. This is definitely painting, painting a lot of line work. Sharpening it up and then coming back in with some water, thinning it out, and just really trying to get that textural feel to the, uh, to the weathered boards on the barn. There we go. Now I'm, looks like I'm back to glazing some, some larger areas, slightly larger brush. Mixing in the cool colors and the shadow side. So now I'm working on fixing a little splatter, it looks like, that got up in the sky that was in the wrong spot. It had sat there and I hadn't noticed. It had dried, so I just dampened my brush out with just water, put a little 
water on that spot, let it soak, and then just, just uh, dab it out. Just a little quick repair. As I continue to fuss around with all the, all the contrast, the line work, the structure, the detail, still in the final stage where you kind of do most of this, this uh, fussy work. Okay, so now I'm transitioned over to working in the uh, the middle ground tree line, the hills behind the uh, barn. I'm working with a thinner mixture of color. There's still kind of a a gray, brownish gray. This one has a little more of a contrast to it for a foreground tree, but I'm using a one of those really nice thin almost lettering brush <laughs> it's almost like a dagger but it, they're really good for doing those those trees in the in the middle ground dropping in that kind of detail that that textural detail trunks and angles and and the trees that are going on in the background and I'll just work that up till it has a nice density to it I mix up my angles. I keep, uh, that's a good tip for when painting trees, especially autumn trees or dead trees with no leaves and foliage on it, is to work in a very angular manner. So try not to have, or try not to do noodle trees. That's one of the problems I see with students whenever they're drawing or painting trees. They, they have too many curves to their trunks and to their limbs. They need to be kept fairly angular. And I'm adding a little bit more density to the upper ridge, the tree line right on the top of the ridge. Still working with that really thin brush. Get a little more contrast in there. A little value variety. I'm uh, working a little bit out of order, so I, I jumped up and did a lot of the work, a lot of that real fussy detail on the, on the barn up at the front. Everything's such a, a neutral tone that I wanted to get the contrast, the saturation, textures, and everything done on the barn first before I went after the detail or the apparent detail that happens in the middle ground. I, I wanted to get the balance right. So I wanted definitely the barn to have the, the denser, more saturated feel. So now in the overhead view of the uh, scene, you can kind of see all of that textural work I've done in the middle ground. I'm just about done with that. It's about time to kind of go after the fence posts and start wrapping this piece up. We're, we're coming to the close. Just getting enough of that fussiness read right so I'm dropping some paint in smudging it out with my finger painting with line there's you know at this stage and in, in this type of a technique I'm I'm definitely working and, and drawing a lot with that with that medium with that brush Alright, now I am working on fence posts and I'm going to be wrapping up all the little last little bits of this piece, adding the 
the fence posts in, adding some shadows, probably a little more work with the snow, a little more color onto the snow surface on the foreground, and then I do have the, the birds to drop in into the sky. Now I'm dropping in that very thin mixture of blue for the foreground snow. It's a it's a loaded brush, but I'm kind of keeping it at a very flat angle so it picks up a lot of nice texture from the paper. Dropping some of that cool blue into the uh, middle ground as well. Using the uh, direction of the marks to kind of indicate the uh, direction of the hills that snow bank. And here come the birds. Nice little flock of birds. Kind of angle the directions of their wings try to get a random placement of the of the uh, one bird next to the other we have a nice little flock and then I'm also going to use a bird on the other side of the barn where that that uh, splotch of color was up in the sky that I blotted out. I'm gonna use a bird to kind of disguise that that accident. Even though in the original photograph there was no bird on that side, but I thought that would be a good way to disguise that that splotch. So I'm just coming in, touching in just a little more contrast in the main part of the body. Let the wings be a little thinner. This is where that really thin brush really comes into really works nicely. Just a few more touches of really dark saturated color. We're dropping in another glaze of blue. Again, just working up that nice just working up that nice color complexity, adding the cools in. I, re I really like old weather barns and they have a, a lot of variation in colors from warm to cool. And when you're looking at a barn from that distance, you can kind of have large swaths of, of uh, colors and transitioning into others. And those glazes are just perfect to create those kind of effects. Let that dry, move over to another dry spot now, painting a little more information into the, into the foreground and onto the fence posts. A nice dark, almost black on the right side of those fence posts since the light is coming in from the upper left. more quick sloshes of line work load up my brush drop in some some browns now intensify those reds on the side of the building and just some of my final glazings onto the surface of the barn just get a little more brownish color onto it I like the, uh, the nice combination, the transitions, the, the variations, the undulations of the colors, the warm colors against the cool colors on the surface of the barn. And this piece is really coming to a close at this point. I got a nice sense of depth in the uh, doorway underneath. Looks like you're looking into a space. Pick a little more of the highlights out on that. Pick up 
picking a few more of the boards, lifting out some highlights. It's like I'm fixing a little bit of a, a bleed right there, right underneath the opening of the barn. And because of all the glazing, I softened up some of the darker edges, so I'm popping those in, putting some shadows on the sides of the fence posts. Sorry about my brim of my hat coming into view there. My last little final touches and details, lots of contrast. This is fairly thick paint, just for that little dab of structure and contrast, visual texture. And my last step on this little piece, add my signature to it, date it, and we are wrapping it up. This is the final piece, how it turned out. I want to thank you for watching this video. If you think you got any good value out of it, please give me a like and a subscribe. I much appreciate your support, and we'll see you in the next video.